Women undergo major changes during menopause and if addressed correctly by using hormone replacement therapy, we can lower the chance of heart attacks, improve bone strength and reduce overall mortality rates. So how do we get menopause hormone therapy right and is it safe? For this video, we'll go through the guideline that I use in my medical practice that was written by the gynecology board and it's used across New Zealand. A bit of background to start with. Menopause is defined as having no periods for greater than one year duration in a non-pregnant patient. It's usually associated with estrogen deficiency symptoms. These include things like hot flushes and vaginal dryness. Increased luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels, they are seen but blood tests are only indicated if clinical doubt exists. And I just want to emphasize that point. Hormone blood tests, they are unhelpful because they fluctuate daily so they're very difficult to interpret. And having normal blood tests, they don't exclude menopause. They are only useful if a potential diagnosis of premature ovarian insufficiency is being considered. So these are in patients less than 40 years old. That's when we do do the blood tests and they are clinically meaningful. And we need to think about menopause when it comes to longevity because there are important health consequences. For example, it's common to have a weight increase by average of about 4 kilograms. There's an increased risk of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. There's also accelerated bone loss and risk of osteoporosis. So we can try and address some of these things by using hormone replacement therapy. With that background out the way, let's now dive into menopause hormone therapy and that that's now the preferred name. So there's good evidence to support the safe use of menopause hormone therapy in women within 10 years of their final menstrual period or if they're aged less than 60 years old, except, and this is crucial, for those that have got estrogen-dependent cancers or a history of breast cancer. And before considering this therapy, we need to make sure that there's no other reasons why it can't be prescribed. So for example, we need to make sure that the patients aren't pregnant, that there's not undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, that there's no thromboembolic disorder, no suspected or active breast cancer or endometrial cancer, or active liver disease. On the point of pregnancy, we need to figure out if contra contraception is still required, so it is required if the patients are less than 50 years old or if they're above 50 years old but within one year of their final menstrual period. Before we move on to the benefits and risks of this therapy, I do want to clarify something. The benefits that primarily gleaned from the estrogen component, the progesterone is there to protect the uterus. So a woman with a uterus, if they are prescribed the estrogen, then they do need the progesterone and this is to protect the uterus from endometrial cancer. An intrauterine device such as a marina can be used to provide the progesterone to protect the endometrial this is important because when we have a look at the benefits and risks of menopause hormone therapy, it's mainly the estrogen that provides the benefit. So let's go through it step by step. This table of benefits and risks is produced from a large study published in 2013. So if we look at women between the ages of 50 and 59, if they have just the estrogen component of the menopause hormone therapy, there's 11 less heart attacks per 10,000 women. But if we have the combined estrogen and progesterone, then there's actually five more heart attacks per 10,000 women. And this is why for my postmenopausal women, I suggest to them if they still have a uterus to use a marina to provide that progesterone and protect the endometrium because that way we don't need to take a pill for the progesterone and we can actually get benefits from the menopause hormone therapy. It's a similar story with strokes where there's one less stroke per 10,000 women if we just use the estrogen. But with the progesterone and estrogen combined, there's five more strokes. To finish off the benefits, there's less breast cancer cancer, less total fractures and less hip fractures and this is because the estrogen component that is there to help strengthen the bones. There's also lower death rates in the patients that are prescribed menopause hormone therapy. So how is this therapy actually prescribed? Well remember it's the estrogen component that actually provides the benefits and generally that is prescribed via a transdermal route. The advantage of these estrogen patches compared to an estrogen pill is that the patches they avoid the gut and it avoids the breakdown in the liver. There's also no effect on testosterone or thyroid levels. It's also a bit more convenient because these patches, they only need to be changed twice a week. So let's go through a few scenarios, starting with women that still have their uterus intact. So after making sure that this therapy is safe for the patient sitting in front of me and ruling out any need for contraception, then I prescribe the estradiol patches. And these come in different dosages and we use the dose that's lowest to make sure that their symptoms are controlled. The doses start at 25 micrograms and go 
all the way up to 100 micrograms and these patches are changed twice a week. And because we need to protect the lining of the uterus, we need to make sure that those patients, they are receiving progesterone. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the best way to do this is by using a marina because that way we're delivering the medication to the uterus and it doesn't need to go to the rest of the body. But for patients that don't want to have a marina, that's when they need to take a medication, a pill version of the progesterone. And it looks like the best pill version of progesterone is the natural micronized progesterone. So the one that we use here in New Zealand is called uterogestan. This is a natural progesterone and research suggests that it has a more neutral effect on cardiovascular and breast cancer risk compared to the other versions of the oral progesterone. It's usually taken at night because it's got a sedative effect. But for patients that have had a hysterectomy, they do not need that progesterone protection, so it's only the estrogen that's prescribed. And when it comes to compounded bioidentical hormone therapy, generally that's not recommended because the quality, it can't be guaranteed. And like we've gone through, the best way to deliver estrogen is via the transdermal route, not pills. Also, it's the same thing for progesterone. We want to make sure that it gets to the endometrium, and the best way to do that is by using a marina, or if patients don't want to use the marina, that's when we used the micronized pills. Now, we've only got safety data going out to the age of 60, so when my patients start to reach that point, that's when we need to start withdrawing the therapy. And we do this very slowly by reducing the dose every 6 to 12 weeks. Overall, when done correctly, menopause hormone therapy can be a powerful tool in longevity. We can reduce heart attacks, possibly reduce strokes, and we can strengthen the bones. And if you're looking for further ways to reduce your heart disease risk, make sure to check out this next video here on cholesterol. A big thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients, as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.